Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. <coughs> What's the value of something? Um, how do you know what something is worth? Well, let's take really simple stuff. That camera there, what do you guys think it cost me? Just take a guess. Pretend around the price is right or something like that, you know? Any number you like. 80 bucks. That's about right. Uh, the tripod's another 10 bucks or so. So, yeah, I think that's about the going rate for those sort of things. Um, how much do you think these desks cost Marist? I have no idea what they pay for these sort of things. What would you guess? Five bucks. Because <laughs> they're because they're so uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's probably more than that, but I I I'm, I'm sympathetic to the uh, to the devaluing of them. I I wouldn't. I can't see paying much for one of these sort of things. Um, I can't see anybody buying them for their own pleasure either. Um, what's this worth? This is worth quite a bit more, even though it's fairly used. How much should you pay for an iPhone? Those of you who've got iPhones. hundred. What's that? hundred bucks. That's if, you, that's if you're like turning it in and getting another one or something like that. How much would you pay like on the open market for it? Yeah, like six. Yeah, about 600 bucks. We have, you know, we, we, how much do you pay for a cup of coffee? What do you consider a good price? What do we consider a good price? Yeah, what do, what do, you, what do you consider a good price? Dollar. Yeah, yeah I, I'd like to pay a buck for a cup of coffee too. Yeah, and you know, if you go over to the, the cafe, it's a little bit, slightly, a little bit more than a, a buck, but that's not a bad price. Go to Starbucks, they'll charge you a bit more, right? Does that bother you? <coughs> you know, no? Maybe you're paying for the ambiance and stuff like that. So here's the basic idea. You pay for things all the time. And all of you actually are in the process of acquiring talents, which you are hopefully going to get paid for using, right? Somebody's going to pay you to you know, do whatever it is that you're, you're learning how to do. Some of you are being, going to be teachers, some of you are going to be accountants, some of you are going into uh, business, others are, are going into all, all sorts of other fields. Somebody should pay you for that, right? This is, this is a basic concept that we have. Um, how much do, do things cost? Uh, well, this, this applies to our character as well. And this applies to the way we make decisions. Epictetus says we ought to always think about the price of things. So he talks about um, um, figuring out what's appropriate to us. You know, there are some things that are probably more appropriate to me, less appropriate to you because of my time of, of life, my age, right? There are some things that are appropriate to you that are not appropriate to me because of students. Um, He's got a kind of funny example here. He talks about holding a chamber pot for somebody else. Now, that's literally a, a pot to piss in. You know, when you hear that old expression, uh, people, before they had toilets, they had these chamber pots, and they're called chamber pots because they'd be in the room, and you'd do your business in them, and then they'd empty them out later on. And if you were really somebody, somebody would actually hold it for you, and that's how you could tell you really made it in the ancient world or the medieval world. Or I suppose even the early modern world until they started getting, putting privies in and things like that. Um, he says, how do you determine whether you ought to do this sort of thing or not? So think about any sort of degrading thing that you've had to do. Think about the worst jobs that you guys have had so far and some of the crap stuff that you've had to put up with. Um, now, why did you put up with it? Why, why was it? Was it worth it to you? Looking back on it, did you say, I should have told that person a goal take a leap. I know, if I look back on some of my jobs that I've worked, I, there's probably some circumstances where I, I should have said, 
forget this. I have enough fun. And there were a lot of jobs I actually did quit. You know, I remember I quit one job because um, they told me I had to dust shelves. It was a gas station, and uh, you know, working second shift in a gas station, you got to sell stuff to people and you know take care of the pumps and all that. But then there was a lot of time for reading and, and writing letters. But they had a camera. And the, the boss actually said, okay, no more writing letters, no more reading books or anything like that on your spare time. And I was like, well, what do you expect us to do? And she said, dust shelves. And I said, that's it. I'm done with that. That was the chamber pot for me. <coughs> I guess you guys have probably had some stuff like that, right? So how do you tell whether you should put up with it or not? He says, um, for one man, it's consistent with reason to hold a chamber pot for another and to look to this only. If he does not hold it, he will receive stripes. He's going to get punished and he won't receive his food. But if he does hold the pot, he won't suffer anything hard or disagreeable. Another man, not only does the holding of the chamber pot appear intolerable, intolerable for himself, but also intolerable to allow another to do this for him. So we have different ideas about you know, what offends our dignity, what, what goes against who we are. Um, you gotta ask yourself this question. Why are you doing X. What are you getting out of it? Um, what is the trade-off? And, you know, what are the things that motivate people? Money, right? That's one reason why we do things, isn't it? Yeah. Pleasure. Pleasure, yeah. Uh, yeah. Attention. Attention, yeah, very good. People do a lot of stupid things just to try to get attention, don't they? Um, some people on, on the supposition that any attention is good attention. Um, what is this guy trying to avoid? He's trying to avoid um, discomfort. What's really important to you? Will you do anything for money? Or, or are there some lines you won't cross? Some things that you think are, are more important for you than, than money? Everything has its price. Everything has its price? It's monetary price? Yeah. Okay. Then, then there's some, nothing you wouldn't, wouldn't do for money, right? Yeah. What about the rest of you? Are there any lines you wouldn't cross? Yeah? How much to kill someone? That's a good question. And then, you know, can I say, well, does he have it coming? You know, does that lower the price? And all these sorts of things, right? Um, I mean, some people would say I would never, I would never do it. Uh, why would you never do it? You know, some people might say oh, I might get caught or something like that. But some people would say, well, it's wrong, and I don't want to be forced into doing a wrong action. Um, <coughs> how much would you? How much money would you accept for putting your parents in harm's way? Would a million bucks? Tempt you? Ten million? I mean, you'd be set for life with ten million, right? Get yourself some new parents. <laughs> you can't, right? But, I mean, th these are the sort of things that people actually have to think about. Um, that's what, what he means by a price. So, he says, if you ask me whether you should hold a chamber pot or not, <coughs> I say to you, if the receiving of food is worth more than the not receiving, and being scourged is a greater indignity than not being scourged, and you measure your interest by these things, go hold the chamber pot. Makes perfect sense for you to do that. That's being rational. If those are your principles, if that's how you measure things. Um, if you say, well, that would not be worthy of me. I'm better than that. I am worth more than that. And he says, well, then that's up to you. You are the one who's introducing this, this into the inquiry, not I. For you know yourself, how much you're worth to yourself, and at what price you sell yourself. So this is the, the fundamental question. <clears throat> what price do you sell yourself? Yeah. You know? Um, that's worth considering. Maybe there's some things that you shouldn't do. Maybe it shouldn't be, you know, do anything for money, because maybe there's some things that later on down the line you say, but that was a bad deal. The money was not worth the indignity that I had to put up with. <clears throat> you know. Um, or 
it could be, you know, the, the, the attention wasn't worth it. The, uh, um, the pleasure wasn't worth it. Avoiding the discomfort wasn't worth it. I should have done something different. If you say that, then you're saying, I, I was worth more. The trouble is, once you've actually sold yourself, you may not be worth that anymore. Um, he, uh, he has some examples here in the Enchiridion. This is some interesting stuff, too. He says, when you're going about any action, remind yourself what the nature of the action is. If you're going to bathe. Now, do you guys know about like the, the Greeks and the Romans and baths and stuff like that? Or is this something that didn't make... You thought just like an individual bathtub when you're talking about going to bathe? Yeah? The Greeks and Romans, you did have a few houses that actually had individual baths inside of them. For the most part, you went to the public baths. And the public baths were these gigantic complexes, and they actually all, they were like spas, basically, because they'd have you know, hot, um, hot water and cold, cool water or room temperature water. And then they'd have places where people would massage olive oil into you, and they'd, they'd put so much olive oil that they actually had scrapers to scrape the excess oil off your skin. And some of them did like you know, mud baths and things like that, the kind of things that people go to spas for. Now, um, instead of thinking the baths, think going to the public pool. How many of you have gone to the public pool before? How fun is that? Is it a great experience? Why not? Is, is it as fun as going to a private pool? Why not? People are dirty. People are dirty. Yeah, you get in the water, you can't be completely sure about what, is, what else is in the water, right? <laughs> You see things in the water. Yeah, it depends on the cleanliness of the pool. Um, what else? That, that's one irritation. What else is irritating? Yeah. Do you not have people there? Yeah, it's a, it, you lack privacy of any sort of uh, extent. And they're usually noisy, right? You know, kids are running all around and doing things. Somebody stands in your sun. You can't get the chairs that you'd like. You know, we could run down the whole list. He's talking about something like that. He says, if you're going to a bath, picture to yourself the sort of things that typically happen at the bath. Some people splash the water. You know, Some people splash the water just because they get in and they're careless. Some people splash the water onto you because they're jerks, right? Um, some push. Some use abusive language. Others steal. You know, if you leave your stuff out, right? You, you want a locker at a public pool because otherwise people will take your stuff. Um, so he says, you will more safely go about this action if you say to yourself, I'm going to go now to bathe and keep my own mind in a state conformable to nature. You have to say to yourself, if you're doing this example, it was not only to bathe that I desired, but to keep my mind in a state conformable to nature, to keep myself calm, to keep myself in control. Um, that's the price sometimes that's paid for things. I will not keep it if I'm bothered at things that, that happen. Um, he talks later on about um, you know, they had servants, slaves back then, right? And we don't have servants for the most part, um, but we uh, we do have people that do things for us, right? Where do, where do we pay people? I mean, you're paying, you know, for for this right now, right? What else do you pay for in your in your ordinary day? Restaurants. Go to restaurants, yeah. If you go to the cafeteria, I suppose it's on your meal plan, but you've paid for it, right? Um, what else? So restaurants, classes, what else in the life of the student is something you're paying for? Haircuts. Haircuts, the less frequently than eating, but, you know, yeah, that's important. Uh, we can get irritated about haircuts. Um, anything else you guys ever do? Well, let's just stick with that. So you go to the restaurant, right? What do you want from a restaurant? Good food. Good food. That's not enough, though, right? Good service. Yeah, good service. That's The server can be a jerk. Sometimes it happens, right? Um, you don't have any control over that, do you? You have some control. If you act like a jerk to the server, probably they're going to act like a jerk to you, unless they're having a particularly good day or particularly well-trained. Um, but you don't actually control that. So you know, you go across the, the street or down the road. What's what's a restaurant around here you guys recommend? Anything? None? You guys don't eat in town? 
Any place that you can think of that is particularly good service that's struck you before in the past? Lola's. What's that? Lola's. Yeah. Lola's? Yeah. Is that around here? Or? Yeah, it's on um, Washington. Washington yeah. Okay. So you go to Lola's, and uh, usually they have good service. Now, it's a new person there. They come to the table, they knock your, your water over. Um, what else would be? They don't, they're not attentive to you and all that. Are you going to let that bother you? Or do you say to yourself, well, this is the price of going to restaurants. You don't get everything necessarily that you, you want. This is the way the world works. Are you going to sell out your peace of mind for a napkin, for a bread roll, for some spilled water? You know, you, that's up to you and the way that you, you worry yourself. He has another good example here. He says, is anybody preferred before you at an entertainment or in a compliment or being admitted to a consultation? If these things are good, you ought to be glad that you've got them. If they're bad, don't be grieved you don't have them. And remember that you cannot, without using the same means, acquire things not in your control. Expect to be thought worthy of an equal share of them. For how can he who does not frequent the door of any great man, does not attend him, does not praise him, have an equal share with one who does? If you want people to treat you in a certain way, you, you know, and, and that requires sucking up to them, well, you probably have to suck up to them. If that's the price that you have to pay for it, and that's really what you want, then you need to do that if you want that, that, you know, that good. And it doesn't, you know, it's silly to complain that you're not getting the same thing as somebody else who did the, you know, the uh, brown nosing, as we say, right? Um, because they're the ones who did it. If you didn't sell yourself out for that, you actually did the right thing for Epictetus if you didn't sell yourself out for that. Um, you shouldn't be jealous of those people. That's a sign of not getting things right according to, to Stoic ethics. So uh, that's probably enough about, about prices.